What's up dudes and dudes to the internet, my name's Scythe and today we're going to be doing a long overdue, very highly requested tutorial of how you actually create mods that you can use in Trove and that can also have a chance of being accepted into Trove. What I mean by that is most of the costumes in game and almost 99% of the weapons for sure, uh, including the mounts and stuff like that, have all actually been created in some form uh, of a mod and then the devs ended up accepting it into the game. I do want to point out that if you don't really know that much about computers, this may seem a little bit daunting at first, but I'm going to try and explain this in a way that you can understand. Rest assured that once you end up getting the hang of it, it's actually a lot easier than you think. So let's get started. First and foremost, you're going to have to navigate to your Trove folder. Personally, I just use the Glyph version of Trove, which is C program files Glyph, because I actually just have it in its own game folder. So normally the default install would just be Glyph, Games, Trove, and the Live folder. That's where you want to get to. As for the Steam version, you just go to Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Trove, Games, Trove, Live. It's a good idea to go up one folder and then just right click and drag this live folder onto your desktop and create a shortcut or something because you're going to have to come into this folder a lot. The next step, of course, is just to create a mods folder, which I would recommend putting an explanation mark at the front of it so that the game doesn't accidentally recognize it and stuff like that. But you should actually be good. Not to mention the explanation mark means it's always going to show up at the top. And then if your troll folder does not already have one of these, you're going to want to create a folder called QB export. It has to be all lowercase as well. Now here's where things get a little bit scratchy. Hold control just for a quick shortcut, or you can always just open it separately. But if you hold control and then double click on blueprints, you will actually have uh, the blueprints folder open in a secondary window. You're going to need to have both of these in two separate windows. Now, if you're wondering how sometimes people will be able to peek into the game files and see some mounts and uh, classes that aren't actually in game yet, that's because of this blueprints folder. This is where every item in the game is. Now, unfortunately, my version of Trove is a little bit on the old side, and because of it, I actually don't have all of the blueprints in this folder. Even though I have about 13,000 items in this folder, the actual number is a little bit closer to 30,000. Which doesn't really matter, I'm just trying to make a point. Each of the items themselves is actually sorted by a specific tag, so C underscore C usually is a ally. Depending on the version of Windows that you have, you can usually just use the search function up here, so what I like doing is C underscore P, uh, and this is actually all of the classes. And if you're wondering what the Adventurer class is, that's actually the Boomeranger from Trove. Its original coded name was called the Adventurer, and then in-game it was named the Boomeranger. This actually is the case for a couple different classes. Even the Ice Sage is actually called the Ice Mage in this folder. Now this is where things can end up getting a bit tricky because you'll have to try and track down all of the files required to actually change the character's costume. When you see level 2, it actually means that it's the level 10 costume of any given character. So it's pretty easy to find the costume itself because you would just have to copy all of the Ice Mage costumes that have level 2 in them. Now the class abilities themselves actually don't have the level 2 indicator. They actually just have one underscore and can be a bit tricky to find. So for the sake of today's video, I'm just going to grab all these level 2 costumes. Normally you would grab all the different files that are marked level 2, but we're just going to grab the UI right here just so I can show you. This is why we opened the secondary folder. Click and drag this blueprint file into the DevTool Dungeon Blueprint 2QB. And for a split second, a command prompt will actually open up. This is why the QB export is important, because now if we navigate into here, you can see the file that we just converted. The reason you're converting these blueprint files into QB files is because voxel programs in general don't read blueprint files, they can only read the QB files. This is where things get a little bit hectic as you end up adding and converting more files over at one time, because all of these different files right here are not actually required. This blueprint one is always useless, so you can just delete it, and then these are actually the alpha and specular maps and stuff like that, which we'll get into those a little later in the video. For now, you're probably just going to want to delete all of them and then just grab this bad boy right here. Go back to the live folder, go to your mods folder, and usually you can end up creating a new folder, which let's just call this one Ice Sage Video, and plot the QB file that we just converted into this folder. 
Now that we're in here, you're going to want to right click and create another new folder and call this one blueprints. It has to be lowercase and we'll talk more about what this actually does in a bit. The next step is to look online for a voxel editing software. You can use Cubicle, Zoxel, there's a couple other programs that you can find very easily online and a lot of them are actually free. The one that I use though is Zoxel because of its ease of use and that's what we're going to be using for today's video. The program itself can be a little bit sticky sometimes, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually no problem. And then from Zoxel, you're just going to want to click open, uh, navigate to where that file actually is, the QB file, double click it, or just press enter. Uh, now, this is important right here, everybody. So it looks like you are opening a Voxel model exported by Trove. Should we try to restore the attachment point out of the QB's metadata for you? In most cases, uh, actually all the time, you can easily click yes. For the sake of convenience, I've cleared away the rest of the model just so you can see this is what Zoxel just created, this block right here. This specific color, which you can actually see up here, is going to be the center of the object. This is very important for weapons, helmets, and stuff like that. Once the UI itself is actually open, which you recognize this, this is actually my Kigurumi costume, not the Ice Age, I know. But I'll kind of just give you a little bit of a rundown on the controls. You hold the middle mouse click to actually rotate the object, hold control and middle mouse click to kind of shift it around and uh, change its axis and stuff like that, which can be a little bit scary on this program because it actually just, woo, you know, it throws it around like really, really quickly. And then by pressing control one, five, six, all the way down uh, to the bottom, you can actually use that for hotkeys for all of these things. The paint brush is specifically used to paint objects, which we don't want to do this because it would make the file end up screwing up like crazy. This erase tool is self-explanatory where you can erase one block at a time, but personally I would recommend just using the drawing tool to erase blocks because you just right click to erase them or hold shift, right click one area, and then when you hold shift and right click the next area, it's going to delete all of the blocks within that space. This also works vertically as well as horizontally. This is your main tool because the left click of this is actually going to be drawing and adding in new voxels. The rest of the tools are pretty self-explanatory and honestly I don't really use them as much. The fill tool of course can just paint uh, an entire area one color uh, and then just for the shading one, left click is always going to be a dark version of the color that you're on while right click is always going to be a lighter version of the color that you are actually clicking on which is very handy for quick and easy shading, but personally I don't really use them that often. Now it's time to get to the complicated parts. This file that we've been editing and tinkering around with is actually the UI file. And what the UI file is, is just what the costume looks like inside the collections menu. If you're trying to create a costume that you want in game, instead you're going to have to get each of the individual files that I mentioned in the blueprints folder and convert those over to a QB and do pretty much all the same steps that we've done up to this point. This is where modding gets very, very time consuming because for example, Dracolite left foot, if we open that, there's his left foot. The way that modding works in Trove is you have to create each individual moving part of a character in a separate file on its own. This is where these pinkish purple blocks come into play because it's telling the game that this is where the foot starts of the Dracolite. Now we will briefly talk about material maps. This is where you can make a character shiny, glow, or have see-through blocks and stuff like that. I'm going to have links in the description to all of this stuff too. There are three different types of material maps. Underscore T, which is going to be a type map. Underscore A, which is going to be an alpha map. And underscore S, which is a specular map. This is also a good example right here to show you that this will be our item name, which we'll talk more about the importance of this later in the video. And then you just simply add underscore T for the type A for alpha, S for specular. The type map is adding an initial effect in the first place. And that's where all of these different colors come into play. So I've opened up this model and this is actually a type map of my uh, Bastion costume for the night. This is where color comes into play. So you can simply copy and paste all of these different numbers here that are under the hashtag and then you just put them over in this section. Make sure that the hashtag is there though because that is important. Solid means that this is going to look just normal and be completely unaffected. The glass color is going to tell the game that a specific block is a glass or see-through block which we'll talk about that in a little bit. 
Child glass? I'm not exactly sure what that is, sorry to say, folks, because I've never really used it. But glowing solid, of course, just makes it a glowing solid block, and glowing glass means that it's going to be transparent and glowing. A better example would be my Reinhardt's shield, so you can see that this is solid and this is glowing glass all around it. Also note that you're going to have to keep this purple pinky block intact. You can't color over this, otherwise it's going to mess things up. Now that we've told the mod that this is going to be glowing glass, we'll move over to the alpha mount. That's what this list of colors is right here. Very opaque means that you can't see through it. It means that it's going to be solid. So anything you don't want to be see-through, you're going to have to label as solid color. And then, of course, the rest of the shield, I ended up choosing one of the colors in here. It looks like it might be this 50-50-50 one. Uh, and just depending on the bottom is kind of the most solid an object can be, while going all the way to the top and darkest color is going to make it more transparent and more see-through. Another fun fact to point out that just is how Trove ends up working is that you yourself are going to be able to see this as a transparent block in-game, while other players actually won't be able to see through it. And then finally we get to the specular map. This is where you end up getting blocks to look shiny and various different things like that. So you can see that I use the metal color on the center of the shield and rough is just the default telling the mod that this is going to remain as the default color that we've uh, done with all the other stuff. And that's all there really is to the material maps, everybody. You're just going to have to mess with it yourself. But remember, you have to have the default shield itself, and this is what the object is going to look like. While all of these material maps are just adding different effects to the way it's going to look in game. The specular map makes this part shiny like metal, while the type and alpha map tell the edge around it that we want it to be transparent and glowing. Once you have something that you're satisfied with, you would actually select all of these QB files, click and drag them to the convert to blueprint. I'll just do the bomb for now just to give you an idea because it's going to create blueprint files of all of these in this same folder. And then you would just select all of the blueprints only and put them into the blueprints folder. From this point, I do want to mention that the file name is very, very important because that's also telling the game what file is going to end up being replaced. Trophosaurus is actually a great way of finding a file's name. So you can actually choose this everyday fire starter, which is the starting staff for the Draconis. And under identifier, this is what the file's name is called. So if you end up naming one of your weapon mods into this right here, it means that it's going to replace the fire starter in game. It's also important to note that the fact that these are mods means that you will be the only person that actually sees these changes outside of somebody else who's running the same mods you are. Once you have something that you're happy with, you simply right click the blueprints and send it to a compressed zip folder and then you can name this whatever you want. Make sure that when you do open the zip though, it's going to have blueprints right here. The reason it has to have this blueprints folder and has to all be in lowercase is when you use a mod loading program, it's going to be adding those files to this blueprint folder. Let's just rename it to dragon test and then you would put this into any folder that you have on your computer with all your other trove folders and then you can just refer to my other video of how to actually install mods. As for trying to get any of your weapons, mounts, or mods and stuff like that accepted into the game, I'm pretty sure you just go to the Reddit for Trove Creations, and then you just post about it, and they've got all the instructions on their page. Honestly, I've never had anything of mine accepted into the game, and in fact, I've had some people actually take uh, some of the weapons and stuff that I've put into my mod packs, and they actually upload them to the Trove Reddit, and then it's been accepted into the game that way. So overall, it seems like it's a pretty bad system, especially if somebody can easily just steal something that I created and get it into the game. But honestly, I don't really care because mods do everything that I want them to do. And that should hopefully cover most of it, everybody. As I said, it's a bit of a headache uh, to learn all of this stuff, but once you do get the hang of it, it's no problem. Weapons operate the exact same while being a lot easier than actually modding characters or mounts and stuff like that, because you only need the one weapon itself. And then if we actually open it up, you can see this is the purple block I was talking about, or pink block, I guess, in this case, and that's where your character is going to be holding the weapon. This also applies to helmets as well, but Zoxel's a pretty good program and should prompt you all the time when you're opening a file for the first time, do you want to place this little block? And yes, you always do. 
So then you just take your mod, add it with a mod loader, and log into the game, and all of the files that you have uh, changed and replaced should actually show up as the ones that you modded. If not, it means that you probably just made a simple mistake of labeling this with a capital B or uh, just putting the files in uh, incorrect order or something like that. It, you'd be surprised how commonly you can end up messing up just one tiny thing. And if you're wondering how to put a pack together, you would simply go into each individual mod folder and grab all of these blueprints from this one, uh, all these from the Gunslinger, this is just my Overwatch pack, and then you add all of those into one blueprints folder right here. You can see this is all the characters and all the weapons and stuff like that, and then you would just send this to a zip. Hopefully that covers everything you need to know about modding everybody. I know it took me a very long time to actually make a video like this, but as you can see, it's a bit of a complex stretch, so that kind of explains why I delayed this for so long. And if you do have any questions, you can always leave a comment down below, and hopefully I or somebody else will be able to reply with an answer. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate for you to hadouken the like button, share favorite, and subscribe to Join Team Pixel. Sayonara, and stay epic, everybody.